cool here we are here we are um i'm not sure when you're gonna listen to this i'm not gonna date it or anyway but let's just say um it might be the last day of sober october and i'm over the moon over the moon to finally end this um dreaded month of sobriety it's so far turned into a pretty lackluster sober october in terms of stuff i was meant to do you know the drink not, the not drinking and not doing of drugs for 30 days isn't that difficult right it's super easy to kind of abstain from that i'm not an addict in any way shape or form but in terms of like using it as an opportunity to do the things I haven't done to a really extreme, you know, degree, such as training, such as reading, writing, drawing, all the stuff I wanted to do, I've been lackluster in my effort, absolutely lackluster. Now it has to be said, I could blame it on the fact that we're on we're under some sort of, you know, restricted living, you know, so far. But, you know, rightly or wrongly, I should just blame myself. That's kind of been the only letdown of this. And I think a lot of it has to do with COVID. It definitely has to do. It's just a weird time to do Sober October. And especially when I think about my Discord that I'm part of. And, you know, I'm on this Joe Rogan Discord and a few other ones. And no one is basically talking about Sober October. It's usually got a bit of steam. I think a lot of it obviously has to do with the fact that none of the big guys are doing it, right? The actual guys that, you know, launched this thing or made it popular. The Joe Rogans, the uh, Ari Shafirs, Burt Crash and Tom Segura. None of those guys are doing it except for Joe. He's basically abstaining from alcohol and booze. But I think he's just doing it because he has so many people DMing him via Instagram and any other platform telling him how much Sober October meant to their lives. So he kind of feels a bit accountable to them. So I'm sure he's just trying to like show them, look, I'm still, I'm doing it, blah, blah, blah. So don't uh, take it off the pedal. But in terms of training and uploading images of himself doing crazy workouts and pushing himself to a limit or using his Whoop app or whatever, that hasn't necessarily happened. Talking about Whoop, they actually raised a lot of money, didn't they? Recently, I remember I read an article that they read, they raised something like a hundred million dollars or something i'm pretty sure i must have read that let me see if i if i if i'm read that correctly whoop uh funding the funding or investment let's see yeah there we go 1.2 billion value lay value value valuation are you absolutely out of your mind oh my god that's insane so yeah, the Whoop um, wearable fitness tracker thing that they use during Sober October has been valued at 1.2 billion. God damn it, that's amazing, man. Look at that. That is sensational news, isn't it? Flip me. I, I wonder if um, Joe's got any stocks in it or if he's in... I guess he'd have to like declare it or kind of make it known if he was promoting it on his platform, I'm assuming, right? Is that a thing? I'm not too sure, but anyway, let's see. It's an article from Mobile Health News. So fitness wearable Whoop joins a unicorn club with 1.2 billion valuation. Um, the Boston-based um, digital... Okay, wow. Is, do you reckon they were based in Boston prior to lockdown? Or is this just a... Or is Boston like one of the other Silicon Valley places in the US? Because I've not really heard of many. Or maybe is it Salesforce? What's another startup that's in, based in Boston? Either way, let me know. If you're in America and you know of any other startup based in Boston, I'd love to know. So Boston, Boston-based uh, digital fitness company Whoop is now boasting a 1.2 billion valuation following its 100 million, 100 million dollar investment um, in Series E funding. IVP led the round with participation from SoftBank Vision Fund 2, Accomplice, uh, Two Sigma Ventures, Collaborative Fund, Thursday Ventures, uh, Nextview Ventures, uh, everything's got Venture, Prumus Ventures, Kavu Ventures, D2, Zero Capital, Lion Tree Partners, as well as additional private investors. This funding comes roughly after one year the company closed 55 million Series D for a round that was a combination of debt and equity. God damn it, well done. What it does, Whoop was created as a wearable tool that comes along with a personalized coaching. Customers who join as part of the monthly subscription service will get a wearable strap that captures physiological data, including sleep, fitness, and recovery. That data is then sent to a corresponding app, which can give users insight about their training and recovery. The app will provide users with sleep recommendation based on the user analytics. The other type of coaching that users can tap into is, just, is for strain. Um, basically that means that the daily measures of stress someone is over a 24-hour period other time users can track their trends what is it for the company said it was put um, the new money towards funding new products and software developments towards investing in global expansion and more member services the company has already been active in hiring it boosts 200 employees in 2020 which is more than half its current 330 team 
market snapshot. While there are many fitness wearables on the market, including big names such as Apple Watch and Fitbit, Amazon's new Halo tracker has drawn many comparisons to Whoop from the public and press alike. The tracker consists of a fabric brand and accompanying app. The tool is able to gain, then give its users the metrics that their health and fitness requires. When Amazon wearables was launched in August, Whoop founder Will Ahmed was critical about it on Twitter, Fred alleging that yes, Amazon immediate intimidated our industrial design and yes, they met with us potential investors years ago under the Alexa fund. Ooh, that is really dodgy, isn't it? Amazon meant them and then went uh, went behind their back and basically copied their design. However, Ahmed said he welcomes Amazon to the market. In his Twitter chain, he does warn, beware, many companies will make you the product. Amazon being one of the most likely to exploit your data for other means. Jesus Christ, mate. 1.2 billion valuation. So yeah, well... There's been not much push against this. I'm sure Joe Reagan probably helped to boost the valuation. But so far, Sober October has been a bit of a dud. In terms of sobriety, again, it's amazing. I say it before, I'm a little bit of a party kid. I love to go out and get, you know, get on it during the night time. So it's nice to have a bit of a break. This year has been a bit different because obviously we've all been under lockdown. So I think most people's alcohol consumption has gone up at home. Mine has sort of, but I did have periods in time where I just sort of abstained from it because it gets boring. After you've been at home getting smashed a couple of times, the fun kind of gets out of it, right? And you kind of want to go out somewhere and be around strangers, stand next to a speaker and hearing the bass rattle through your eardrums. So without that, it does seem a bit like, you know, a little bit of a cheap um, alternative. But um, so far, so good, really. I found I sleep a lot easier. I'm waking up a lot earlier as well in the morning. Of course, most of the time, I never really use my alarm. So it's nice to get up between the hours of like 5 and 8 a.m. in the morning without much help, especially if I sleep before midnight. I tend to get a really, really good night's worth of sleep. My concentration's pretty good. When I'm reading, I can probably, I can lock in a lot longer and not need to kind of check my phone. I, I think I've kind of managed up to about an hour and a half of just straight reading without, you know, checking anything. So that's been pretty good. Um, alertness has been all right. Recovery has been pretty nice too, especially with my running. I found that without drinking, you recover a whole lot better. But obviously that's, con that's probably a common sense thing. But yeah, it's been a bit lackluster. I'm happy to kind of get it out of the way. Um, I guess November will be another opportunity to do another challenge, maybe become a little bit more committed in terms of making sure I finish the books I was meant to finish. I finished about one, no, two of the six books that I had. And I think if I would have committed a bit more time to it, and sort of concentrate a bit more, I would have done it. But again, with lockdown and stuff, it's just hard to kind of motivate yourself to kind of do these things, especially when you know there's enough. You kind of don't have anything to aim for. I think that's the thing that's kind of um, got my motivation down. There's nothing to really aim for. Like we don't have any light at the end of the tunnel with COVID. No one really knows when restrictions will be lifted to some extent to allow us to kind of move around. Because you know what, I'm, I'm all right with restrictions. Just allow me to move around and kind of maybe go on holiday somewhere and, you know, have a, you know, kind of disconnect from whatever's going on. That, that will be good. And without feeling guilty that I'm going to put other people in danger. But so far, that feeling hasn't come about. But again, Sober October 2020 has been a success in terms of getting me off the booze and the drugs. That's been great. Um, if you've been doing it during this year, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Has it been a bit meh for you or have you found it to be as impactful as it's been in previous years? Let me know in the comments down below.